And I'm really overwhelmed by the responsibility to introduce the session. It certainly is an interesting coming together of minds brought about by Wirenet. I must confess that I am no expert but a concerned inhabitant of this planet and who would like to contribute positively to leave the planet as a better place for the unborn. I prefer to use the word planet compared to using the word world because planet embraces within it everything and everyone whereas world is normally a human collective existence on the mother earth day on april 22nd 2022 un secretary general warned that earth is facing triple planetary crisis of clean water fresh air and a stable and predictable climate thereby putting the SDG goals in jeopardy and we have seen it all till now I think the temperatures of 40s were relegated to Asia and Africa and the rest of the world didn't bother till it happened in Europe so now everybody is bothering when we see the extent of these crises, we are overwhelmed and obviously feel powerless. This powerlessness leads to inaction or grasp at some low-hanging fruits of nationalistic and religious jingoism. We are witnessing this, but the need is to move away from these narrow boundaries and understand that air water and stable climate is not confined to these boundaries so let me give you an example how our planet does not confine itself to man-made boundaries and how natural activities can move to thousands of kilometers one planetary example is the connection between Sahara and the Amazon through data it's shown that wind and weather picks up an average of 182 million tons of dust each year and carries it past the western edge of Sahara and leaves it at the Amazon this volume is equivalent to 7 lakh trucks filled with dust imagine how many move in Bangalore every year this dust then travels 1600 miles across the Atlantic Ocean though some of it drops to the surface or is flushed by the rain but why am I talking about this dust this dust is phosphorus rich and it is that which feeds the forest of Amazon and this is the feeding is happening through hundreds 1600 miles not few miles this is our planetary interconnectedness of the natural kind and as mentioned earlier there are no boundaries here but even human intervention has these kind of connectedness let me give another example how human footprint creates ecological connectedness in 1980s Lake Chad of Sahel through 1950s to 80s it had shrunk to its 120th of its area and the explanation because the experts are from the first world they would say you know the agriculture which the locals practice is the reason for its shrinking but you know we can always go back and map things so in 2000 University of Washington did studies and they found one of the culprit was also the sulfate aerosols these aerosols were pumped into the atmosphere by the developed world of Europe and North America 
when they were manufacturing hubs, when they had factories, and also when the Clean Air Act was not in place. So these aerosols combine with the water vapors and they create, destabilize the ocean temperatures. And this way it affects the rains. It not only affected Sahel, it affected even India. So it will be more rain in some places, drought in some places, and Sahel experienced drought. So this resulted in steady decrease in precipitation since 1950s at Sahel. Clean air mandate, better fuel has reduced the aerosols being emitted from Europe. But the loss of water and therefore decent livelihoods forced people to migrate from Africa to Europe. In Africa, especially in North Africa, one of the one proverb they say is the bad news comes from north and here the bad news came as droplets or no droplets of rain. The emission of aerosol is now much less but damage is already done. But, and you know how is it less because the manufacturing is moved to China and South Asia. So we still have to learn from this. And now, the way the growing economies are, the demand is much more of the products and much more of carbon and greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. What this example brings forth is that our action has large range implications. Even the smallest individual actions can bring about change. Taking cue from Stephen Covey's circles of concern, influence, and action. So a concern is our air, our global climate, and influence. Where can we influence, and how can we act? We need to co cooperatively and collaboratively create new possibilities and avoid falling into what Dipesh Chakravarti calls habitual thoughts. He el elaborates what is habitual thought. It's like requesting patience when one is faced with emergency. So the old habits of thought rush into take place of what needs to be thought now. So without getting overwhelmed, we can certainly look at our circle of action and control it. And that is possible in our cities. We start here. Let's look at the city objectively. Though it was defined, the city was defined as a place where inhabitants are occupied with non-agricultural tasks. And historically, these dwellers were a small proportion of the whole population of the planet. But this is changing, and rapidly. In, by 2030, 40% of India's population and 65% of the global population will be in the cities. We'll hear from the panel more about it. Along with this increase in the population, we are confronted with myriad issues. Issues of the inhabitants having safe and quality access to basic lifeline needs and being occupied with decent livelihoods. With climate change as the clear and present future, the cities must develop imaginaries that have no historical precedence. We can't catch on to some traditional way of doing things because it's not what was then. I hope today's discussion will show how we can act to create a new narrative in our cities by not falling into the habitual thought trap. And it is for the reason the title of this seminar is Reclaiming Our Cities and that is important. The act of reclaiming our city acknowledges that our cities are in an undesirable state. Naresh mentions that, you know, our interiors are first class, isn't it? And, but as soon as you get out of the boundary of our homes or our, uh, let's say, our compound wall, it's, what do you call it, it's worse than third class. 
So, yes, so it's an undesirable state. Yet to quite an extent, they are, yes, they are undesirable. But in India, it is a new state of being which we are confronted with. And we are yet to make systems that can grasp and imagine the scale of interventions. Imagine interventions that do not reduce lifespans. At present, Indian cities contribute to reduction of lifespan by two to four years. Because they are host to diabetes and hypertension epidemics and high rate of death of poor, whom we do not want to see but cannot live without. We saw it in, during the pandemic. These difficult propositions were not met with or experienced historically. There were other issues and every time we have tried and improved ourselves, but they were in local scales. Let's take diarrhea. So we understood that we have to have clean water, we created systems so that hand pumps had a concrete ring around and people didn't defecate near it. So we created, but now these are global proportions. Today it needs coming together of various stakeholders and it is in such meets like this that the expansion of ideas and thoughts can occur. Let us look forward to an invigorating evening. I hope we look forward to this and let's hear to all of you. Thank you.